The main thing most teachers want to be able to do with Google Classroom is to uh, push out assignments to their students, to create assignments and then have their students be able to complete that work digitally through Google Classroom. In this video, I want to show you how to create those assignments and also how to collect all of that work digitally from your students instead of having them turn in physical pieces of paper to you in the classroom. All of this starts up at the top by navigating to the Classwork tab. This is the tab that you're going to head to anytime you want to create work that you want your students to complete. So not just an announcement, not something you want to share with them, but actual work that you want them to complete. Once you get over here, the button that you're going to want is this Create button in the upper left-hand corner. Once you click Create, you'll notice that you get several different options. And the one that we're going to be talking about in this video is the Assignment option. It's the main one. Um, it's the one you'll probably use uh, probably 60-70% of the time. So to create an assignment, all you're going to do is click on this button, and it will then give you this assignment creation window. Let's talk about some of the things that uh, you're going to put in here. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to create a title for this assignment. So whatever you think the title is, you'll enter it in there. All right, so I've given mine a title. The next area that you'll have is instructions, and you'll notice this is, notice this is optional. For some assignments, you may not have any instructions. You might just attach a couple of things, and then the students will view those attachments, and that's where the instructions will be. But I want you to understand that also, you can create an assignment that has no attachments. Your assignment could just have a title, and then you could put all of the instructions right here. The instructions can also be non-digital instructions. Maybe your instructions are just grab your textbook, open up to page 392, and read the section covering um, mitosis. And so all of the instructions would be in here digitally, but then the students would perform a physical task afterwards with nothing really to turn in. They're just going to mark that as done. So instructions are optional for you, but this is powerful. It's a space where you can communicate directly in Google Classroom what you want students to do. For my purposes here, I'm just going to say um, a couple of things. you'll notice I've added several different tasks in this instructions field in here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make sure that I add all of the materials and the resources that I said would be available there. One thing I told students to do is to read the attached article. I have a PDF article saved on my desktop. So what I want to do is I want to be able to add that PDF file um, to this assignment. So I'm going to click the add button. I mentioned that this file was saved on my computer, so I'm going to go down here to the File option. It's not in my Google Drive currently, it's on my computer. I'm going to click File, and this will now give me a window where I can figure out where those documents are. I'm going to go over here to Select Files from Your Device, and you'll notice over here I have a PDF called Causes of World War II. I'm going to click that. It, you'll see that it's added over here, and when I click Upload, it's going to take that PDF document, and it's going to upload it and attach it to this assignment. So as soon as this is done, you will notice that I have one PDF file set over here, and the permissions for this are students can view this file. I want them to be able to read everything included in this PDF. But there's more. I need them to also watch the attached video. So for this, I'm going to go over here to the Add button, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate down to YouTube because there's a YouTube video that I'd like them to watch as part of this compare and contrast process. So I'm going to click YouTube over here. If I know the URL of the YouTube video, I can go ahead and enter that in. If I don't, I can use this little search box and I can try to find it. World War II causes. And I was looking for this a little bit earlier, so I've got to dig through and I've got to make sure that I find the one that I was looking for. Let's see. Here it is. Six reasons for World War II. So I'm going to click Add to attach this. And you'll notice now this is an attached, this has attached a link to a YouTube video for my students. The last thing I asked them to do was I asked them to open up a Google Doc, the attached Google Doc, and complete the questions. I have created the Google Doc ahead of time for them. It's saved in my Google Drive, and it just has four compare and contrast questions that I'd like them to answer for this. Um, if instead, if I just wanted them to write a little reflection afterwards, I could include that in my instructions. Afterwards, 
create your own Google Doc and reflect on what you've read. And then for that, students would be able to click the Create button and make their own Google Doc. Since I have already created it and I've already put the four questions in, I'm gonna go over here to the Add button for this. And that Google Doc is saved in my Google Drive. So I'm gonna click Google Drive right over here, select that option. And then I'm gonna go into my Google Drive and I'm gonna find that one. Here it is, Reading Responses. So I'm gonna click Add. And it is now added reading response questions to this assignment. Now, I want to point out another important thing for you over here. I want each student to answer these questions on their own. Right now, the permissions are students can view the file. I need to change that. So to change that, you're going to click this drop down and you have three options. Do you want students to view the file? Do you want students to edit? That would mean that all of my students are collaborating on this one document. That's not going to work for me for this assignment because I don't want all students editing just this one. Instead, what I want is my virtual copy machine. I want Google uh, Classroom to make a copy of this Google Doc, one for each student, so that each student can answer the questions on their own Google Doc and turn it into me. So rather than me going to file, make a copy for each one of these Google Docs and building it for each student, I just attach it once, I click make a copy for each student, and now when I assign this to my class, it will distribute one copy for each student. The other thing that we have not talked about yet is in the add menu, you also have the ability to add a link. So if there's a certain website you want your students to go to, or if you wanna host like an online meet session with them, um, where we're gonna get together and we're gonna discuss something, if you can get a URL link to anything on the internet, um, you can click this little option here, and paste in the link, and then you'll have the link attached here as well. So some assignments will have no attachments. Some assignments might have just one attachment. Some assignments might have multiple attachments, depending on how involved I want the students to be on this. All right, before we share this with our students, I want you to head over here and take a look at this right-hand menu. There are a couple of things we need to look at here. One is we need to decide what class this is going to be for. Right now it is by default for the class that I'm in. But if you teach multiple periods and this same assignment needs to be assigned to periods one, four, and five, you can click this drop down menu and you can put a little check mark next to each class that you want this assigned to. So create it once and then it's in multiple different Google Classrooms. You can also set what students are about to get this assignment. By default, it's going to be for all students. But if you wanted to go through and just assign this to maybe uh, four students in your class, or maybe you wanted to create this assignment multiple times and you wanted to do it one for each group of four students, you have the ability here to take an assignment and assign it for just a certain small select group of students. I also have the ability to set the uh, points for this. It starts off with 100 as the default. I also have the ability to make this ungraded if I want. This is a pretty important assignment. We're gonna go ahead and make this thing worth 35 points. So I'm gonna go in here and type in 35, and that is now the point total for this one. Due dates are pretty important. I recommend adding due dates here because then it will automatically pop up on students' um, calendars when they log into Google Classroom. They'll be able to see what upcoming assignments they have and when those assignments are due. So I'm gonna pick a due date. This is going to be due by Friday. And if I don't pick a time, that just means it's due by the end of the day on Friday. Now, if you teach secondary students, you know that they are huge procrastinators. And if you allow them to have a deadline of midnight, they're all going to be working on this at 11.45 p.m. to try to get it done. So I recommend also adding times that you want it to be done. And I like to think of the times that I put in here as recommendations for when I want students working and completing assignments. So if you want to set a due date, also consider setting a time that it needs to be completed by to help encourage some good, work, healthy work habits out of your students. Last but not least, the other field over here is topic. And topic is one that's really important. This basically allows you to pick a category or a theme for this assignment and then be able to organize your assignments by different topics um, or different category names. So for this one, our, create, or our topic for this is going to be... Um, social studies. If you wanted instead to call this module one, or you wanted to call this a writing assignment, you can create the categories and the topics to be whatever you would like them to be. But I do think it's a good idea to pick some topics that allows you to organize your assignments for students. Lastly, if you have a grading rubric, you can attach your grading rubric right over here. 
And a new feature that Google Classroom has added in is this thing called originality reports, where on really important assignments, um, you can have Google basically do a plagiarism checker, and it will search through the student's document and try to flag anything that may not be original. Um, you are limited to only being able to run this for free on three assignments per Google Classroom. So we recommend that you don't use this until it's a really important writing assignment or something like that um, that you want students to, uh, that you want to be able to check originality for. So if you'd like to learn more about that, there's the little learn more link there. Just make sure you use this sparingly so that you don't use up all of your opportunities. All right, last but not least, to assign this thing and make it go live right now, I can click this assign button. If instead you want to schedule this to go live later, you can click this drop down arrow to the right. You've got assign here. You've got schedule where you can pick a date and a time that you want this to pop up in Google Classroom for students. You can also save your draft if you're working on this, but you're not yet done and you want to come back to it later and make some additional changes. I'm going to click the assign option. And when I click that, you will notice that this gets assigned for my class. It takes a second because it's going to make a copy of that Google Doc for each student that is in my classroom. And once it is done, it will post this up to Google Classroom. Let me see if I can show you what that looks like here in just a second once it goes live. Okay, so once it's live, you'll notice over here, I created that topic called social studies. So now it's in social studies and here's the assignment there. It's a nice way to help keep the information organized in your classroom. Finally, if you go over to the stream tab, you'll notice since I posted something new to the stream, it's appearing right over here and students will see that up at the top of their list.